In this video, we're going to take a look at how you identify if a function is quadratic. And there's three parts that we're going to look at. We're going to look at what if you're given an equation? What if you're given a table? And what if you're given a graph? Is the equation a quadratic function? Well, if it can be written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and a cannot equal zero. If you can write it in that form, then it is a quadratic function. All right, here are some examples. Some of these qualify as quadratic functions and some do not. So let's take a look at them one by one. Okay, the first one, y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. Uh, remember, the a value on that could simply be a one. So that follows our pattern that is quadratic. Okay, second one. Oh, by the way, notice y sometimes gets used instead of f of x. Either way works. All right, next up, f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 30. Is that quadratic? It's missing a b value, but technically it's not missing a b value. The b value simply equals 0. So that is a quadratic. All right, next up f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 7. It does have our ax squared, our bx, and our c, but it's got this x cubed here. Therefore, this is not quadratic. Eh, I guess I shouldn't be so crazy with my cross out so you can't see it. That's not quadratic because you can't have an x cubed. All right, y equals 3x squared minus 7x. That is, okay, that's quadratic. Again, the c value on that is 0. All right, last one. f of x equals 4x times x minus 6. We don't see an x squared here. We see two x's. What's going on here? Well, this one, I think at this point, you guys have probably seen distributive property. And notice what happens if I distribute 4x times x, that's 4x squared, and 4x times negative 6 is negative 24x. So that is quadratic. So sometimes you will be given something, and you got to simplify it to see if it can go into the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you know what? I just realized I wanted to show you what if we have y equals 4x minus 5. Look, that clearly is not quadratic. That is a line. And I just put that up there so that you know why this rule right here exists. We could write y equals 0x squared plus 4x minus 5, but it's not quadratic if the a value is 0. Is it a table for a quadratic function? If you look at this table here, you might recognize it. This is actually y equals x squared. So we know it's a quadratic function. But how do you tell by looking at the table? Let's take a look at these patterns here. What do I do to get from 4 to 1? 4 to 1 is minus 3. 1 to 0 is minus 1. 0 to 1 is plus 1. And 1 to 4 is plus 3. So there's a pattern going on there. But the way to know for certain that it's quadratic is you have to take the first pattern, which, by the way, is called the first difference, and then look at the pattern to the pattern. What do I do to get from negative 3 to negative 1? That's plus 2. How about negative 1 to plus 1? Plus 2. 1 to 3, plus 2. So this part right here is what we call the second difference. And if the second difference is a constant value, meaning the same value over and over, um, then that means that your table is a quadratic function. Let's try another one. Let's see if we can find out, is this quadratic? And you do that by figuring out the pattern, what's your first difference, and then go from there, find your second difference. 
So negative 12 to negative 15 is going down 3. Negative 15 to negative 16 is going down 1. Negative 16 to negative 15 is going up 1. And negative 15 to negative 12 is plus 3. So I'm pretty sure this is going to work. Look, it's the same first difference that we got in our parent graph. And when we take the second difference, we get plus two, plus two, plus two. So this is another quadratic fun function, and we can tell that by finding the second difference. Here's two more to try. If you want to pause the video and go ahead and copy this down, figure out your first difference, and see if your second difference is a constant value. If it is, then it's quadratic. All right, let's take a look. To go from 8 to 10, I'm going plus 2. From 10 to 8, I'm going minus 2. 8 to 2 is minus 6. And 2 to negative 8 is minus 10. So it looks different than the pattern we saw in the previous two. But when we calculate the second difference, how do I get from positive 2 to negative 2? That would be going down 4. And then from negative 2 to negative 6, that's also down 4. And negative 6 to negative 10 is down 4. So that is a quadratic function. All right, on the second one here, I'm going plus 3, plus 6, plus 12, plus 24. Hey, that looks like a pattern to me. Uh, especially, it, look, it's just repeating the table, kind of. But when we do the second difference, we've got plus 3, plus 6, plus 12. There's definitely patterns going on here, but the second difference right here, that's not a constant value. So this is not a quadratic function. You might recognize instead what's happening here is to get from 3 to 6, that's times 2. And then 6 times 2, and 12 times 2, and 24 times 2 gives you 48. This right here, this is exponential. The last thing to look at is, is it a graph of a quadratic function? And if it's a graph, then that means you'd have something that looks like this. So if your graph is a parabola, no, that's a joke. Don't call it a parabola. It sounds like, uh, you know, the next worldwide pandemic or something. Uh, it's called a parabola. If your graph is a parabola, then that means you've got a quadratic function. All right, so parabolas could look like this. They could look like like this, they could look like that, you get the idea. But in order for it to be a function, the parabola has to be going up or down. So the only thing that could cause you some trouble is the question of, is this a parabola? Uh, I don't know without giving, without knowing what are these points? What are these points that we have on this? Because this could be a J curve. This could be exponential on the right, or it could be the right side of a parabola. So you don't know what that is. You'd have to take those points and you could put the points into a table and then see if the second difference is constant. Another way is if it follows the pattern, and if this was the vertex, and you go over 1, up 1 squared, over 2, up 2 squared, over 3, up 3 squared, then you would know it's a parabola. Let's review the three ways we have now to identify if a function is quadratic. If you're given an equation, if you can put it in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it's quadratic. If you're given a table, you have to find the second difference. 
And if the second difference is constant or the same value, then you have a quadratic. And finally, if you're given a graph, if it's a parabola, then it is quadratic.